Hi there and welcome to another video from Hegarty Maths. It's Mr Hegarty here and in this video we're talking about integration and it's our second video on differential equations. Okay, so what we want to do in this video is to solve differential equations by separating variables and integrating like we did in video one on this topic, uh, however from context given in the question. So let me just remind you to where we got. There are two types of differential equations currently we know how to differentiate, that we know how to solve, sorry. The first is the most easy that we didn't even think of uh, was a differential equation. Something like dy by dx is some function of x. What we do is straight away we integrate both sides uh, with respect to x and we get that y is equal to whatever the answer is to the integral of x with respect to x. Okay. The second one we did in the last video was separating variables. If we've got something of the form dy by dx is some function of x multiplied by uh, some function of a y, so call it g of y, what I can do is I can do the following sort of trick as it were. I'm going to rewrite this as dy over dx equals f of x g of y, like that. Now I'm going to keep everything with y's on one side, everything with x's on the other. It's called separating variables and integrate. So I'm dividing, I'm dividing both sides by g of y and multiplying both sides by d of x. So I'd have 1 of g of y dy would be equal to f of x dx and I'd integrate both sides. I'd integrate the left hand side with respect to y because it's a function of y and the right hand side with respect to x because it's a function of x and if I don't have any boundary conditions I'd have plus c. If I have boundary conditions I would work out this value of c and give it a particular solution. So that's what we've learned about already. Let's start by, it's the same method, it's just with context given in the question. So let's do a few examples, just two. Imagine we're told the rate of increase of a population of microorganisms at a time t is given by this differential equation. So this is our key differential equation, dp by dt is equal to kp. And what does p stand for? Well, p is the population, and what is t? t is the time. And we're told that k is a positive constant, and we're given some boundary conditions. When t is 0, the population was 8. When t was 1, the population is 56. And it asks us to find the size of the population when t is equal to 2. OK, all we have to do here is solve the differential equation, use the boundary conditions to find our constants, and then use that final equation to find the population when t is 2. OK, let's separate variables and integrate. A dividing by p, so 1 over p, and keep the dp here, would be k. k is just a number, so I can leave it on this side, dt. And I integrate both sides. I'm going to integrate the left with respect to p and the right with respect to t. Remember, k is just a number, and to make it even clearer, I'm going to um, factor it out of the integral. So it's like that, just so you don't make any mistakes. OK, so integrating this, this would be the natural logarithm of p. And integrating this, integrating 1 with respect to t, is just t. So we'd have kt plus another constant, which I'm going to call, I don't know, um, c. Remember you get another constant. It's very important you remember that. OK, now at this stage, um, why don't we, let's say, let, let's just... Um, take exponentials of both sides, so p would therefore be equal to e to the kt plus c, which I could write p is equal to e to the kt multiplied by e to the c, and I could divide, define another constant, a to be e to the c, because it's just a constant, so p is equal to a e to the kt. Now, our boundary conditions, let's use our boundary conditions because we've got two things that are unknown currently. This is currently a general solution. We don't know the value of this a, and we don't know the value of this k. So hopefully, our boundary conditions will let us find those. So when t is 0, we're told p is equal to 8. And we're also told that when t is 1, p is equal to 56. So let's use that information. So substituting in here, we would have a is equal to a e to the 0, which is just... Um, 
e to the e to the zero is one. So we have a is one, and substituting in here, we would have fifty six is equal to a, which we now know is eight e to the power of um, 1k, so it would just be k. So therefore, dividing by 8, 7 would be equal to e to the power of k, and therefore k, taking logs of both sides, would be the natural logarithm of 7. So we can rewrite, and we can state our particular solution. Our particular solution is therefore p is equal to a, which was 8, e to the ln 7 multiplied by t, so ln 7 multiplied by t, like that. Okay, and now we were asked what is the value of the population when t is 2, so if we substitute t is 2 in here, we would get that p is equal to 8 e to the ln 7 multiplied by 2. Now I could just put the 2 there, like that, and I could say that p is therefore a e to the ln 7 squared, bringing that power of 2 up, which is ln 49. So p would be 8 multiplied by 49, and a p would therefore be 392. Now another way we could have done it, from the general solution, what we could have realised is that we could have rewritten this as p is equal to 8 e to the ln 7 to the power of t, okay, and e to the ln 7 is 7. So p would be 8 multiplied by 7 to the power of t. So if we substitute t as 2 in, it would be p is equal to 8 multiplied by 7 squared. Again, p is 8 times 49. Again, p is 392. Okay, so um, in this question, we just had to use the context, the two boundary conditions given to find the constants, and then use that final differential equation, uh, the, the final solution, to substitute t as 2 to get the answer. Okay, I'm going to give one more question a go, and let's give this one a go. It, we're told that the mass m at time t leaves a certain plant variant according to the following differential equation. So here's our differential equation here. We're told that dm by dt is equal to m subtract m squared. And we're given that when t is 0, m is 0 0.5, find an expression for m in terms of t. Translating that, what that basically means is solve the differential equation so m is a function of t. So we're just basically part a just means solve the differential equation and use these boundary conditions. So what we've got for part a, we've got dm by dt is equal to m subtract m squared. I'm going to separate variables and integrate everything with m is on one side, so it's 1 over m subtract m squared dm is going to be equal to 1 times dt, and I'm going to integrate both sides, okay? Right, now it's really important here that you think of this as 1 multiplied by this. You don't do anything silly like subtract m and add m squared to both sides. You have to, it has to be of the form a function of x, a func like in this case a function of t multiplied by a function of m. So the function of t in this case was just 1, okay? It's all about multiplying, it's not about adding and subtracting, so be very careful there. Now this thing here, you should recognise this can be factorised, it's 1 over m, 1 subtract m, dm is the integral of 1 dt, don't forget you're going to have a constant integration here. Now this, you can write this in partial fractions. Okay, so I'm not going to go through how to get partial fractions here, but the partial fractions turn out to be uh, the following. So when you write this as partial fractions, you get the following. Just trust me on that one, but I'm right. Uh, so you should go away and do that by partial fractions. Okay, but I know it's right. The reason I know it's right is if I cross multiplied back, I'd have an m there, a 1 subtract m there, and I'd end up having an m add 1 subtract m, which is just 1 over the thing I want. So on this side, if I, uh, I'm i going to still integrate 1 with respect to t plus c. Now I can integrate this, this is negative ln 1 subtract m, add ln m is equal to t plus constant. And I could combine these, this ln, take away that ln, I could write that as ln m divided by 1 subtract m is equal to t plus c. And I could take exponentials of both sides, m over 1 subtract m is equal to e to the t plus c, and I could write that as m over 1 subtract m 
is equal to e to the t, e to the c, and define my constant a to be this e to the c thing. So m over 1 subtract m is equal to a e to the t. Okay, now what was it asking us for? It said find an expression um, for m in terms of t. Well, we haven't, uh, let, let's use the boundary conditions first. When t is 0, m is 0 0.5. So when t equals 0, m is equal to 0 0.5. Let's substitute that in. So 0 0.5 divided by 1 subtract 0 0.5 would be equal to a e to the power of 0, which is just 1. And this is a half divided by half is 1. So it tells us a is 1. So we have m over 1 subtract m is equal to e to the t. Now, it wanted m the subject of the formula, so we've got no option but to multiply up by 1 subtract m. m is equal to e to the t multiplied by 1 subtract m. Expand the brackets, m is equal to e to the t subtract uh, m e to the t. Add m e to, to the t, e to the t to both sides, so we have m plus m e to the t is equal to e to the t. Factorise the m, 1 plus e to the t equals e to the t. And therefore, m is the subject of the formula. This complicated thing is e to the t over 1 plus e to the t. So that is m as the subject of this formula, and we have done part a. It says, then for part b, find the value of m when t is ln 2. So for part b, t is equal to ln 2, and it asks what m is. So m is going to be e to the ln 2 divided by 1 plus e to the ln 2. Now, e to the ln 2 is 2, so that's 2 over 1 plus 2. So m would equal 2 thirds. Now it says m was mass. It didn't give a unit. So 2 thirds is fine to leave as your answer. Okay, and for part c, it says explains what happens as uh, to the value of m as t increases. So we know for part c that our formula for m is m is equal to e to the power of t divided by 1 plus e to the t. Now, basically, we've got to think what happens as t becomes a massive number. Now, there are there are different ways of doing it. One way of doing it would be to use your calculator and it would be, if you're not sure your algebraic techniques aren't that strong, what you could do is you could type in e, so e to the power of x of x 1 plus e to the power so 1 plus e to the power x and you could calculate it when x is 1 and you could calculate it when x is 10 and you could calculate it when x is 100 and you could calculate it when x is 1000 and it's getting too big so you can go uh, calculate again um, you could see that it was getting to 1 there so if I just do that one more time if I go back here and I go press calculate and I don't press that many I press uh, 100 I get 1 and when, when I calculate when x is 200, I get 1 as well. So it seems to me that the first option, you could use your calculator as t goes big. So as t tends to infinity, m tends to 1. That's one way of doing it, using the calculator. The other way of doing it would be to be a bit clever and to say m is equal to e to the t over 1 plus e to the t. Now, if I added 1 on top, there's no harm in doing that, adding 1, as long as I took the 1 back off. And I would therefore get this thing here, 1 plus e to the t divided by 1 plus e to the t is 1. So m would be 1. Subtract 1 over 1 plus e to the t. Now, clearly you can see when t tends to a big number here, this thing here tends to a massive number, and 1 divided by massive is nothing. So 1 take away nothing is just 1. So again, as t tends to infinity, m tends to 1. So m tends to 1. So that was another way of doing it, by just being uh, splitting up the fraction neatly. And the third way of doing it, a little trick that tends to work many times, if I had e to the t over 1 plus e to the t, if I divided the top and bottom of this fraction by e to the t, so I'm generating a an equivalent fraction, what would I get? Well, on top, I would get 1. Here, I would get 1 over e to the t, which is e to the negative t. And here, I would get e to the t over e to the t, which is 1. Again, in this case, as t tends to infinity, this thing here disappears, goes to 0, and 1 over 1 is just 1. So again, you have, uh, when t tends to infinity, 
m tends to 1. If you're not sure about these methods, you can obviously get the calculator out on the exam and put in big numbers for t and see that it goes to 1 and just state that. So it would state that as t, so I would state as my answer, what happens as the value of m, m, what happens to the value of m as t increases? As t increases, m goes towards 1. Okay, and we're done there. So I just encourage you to make sure you understand this by reading the following and finish the following questions. Thanks loads for watching.